Lord, all right, you just gave it to me. He told me to turn around and tell somebody, say, a blessing without a break. Look at somebody, say, I can really experience a blessing without a break. Look at somebody else, try it on somebody else, because you know the thing that God can be praised for. Try it on somebody else, say, God can they give you a blessing without a break. because we have been taught by faith that whatever God gives, first of all, he has to put his permission on it. Amen. He has ordained before the foundations of the world. But then he has to support that which he has sent, which is to bless it. Amen. Now that word has been so confusing, but I found an easy way to understand it. To be blessed means to live of the level of God's expectation. That's all it means. Look at the man said, when you're blessed, you're blessed. You don't need to get all in between the cracks and the corners of it. Just when you're blessed, when you're blessed. And you're not just blessed in your body, and you're blessed on your job, you're just blessed. When you're living in the privilege and the privileged position God has given us. So we're blessed, but we were blessed. Which means it's a compound word, but it's to eulogize. To speak well of. God eulogized you. You know, when we're having these funerals and we're eulogizing, we're supposed to be speaking well of the deceased. And sometimes you don't come off that way. Hello. Amen. We're to speak, to bless, compound word, to eulogize. And so God eulogized you before the foundations of the world. Now some of you that might be too heavy for you. But before all of this was made, God actually eulogized you and called your name and then he limited the time that you would be here. I mean, that's bad. When I think about what God can do, it's awesome. Yes, that he speaks a word all the way down. Can you imagine through the bells of time, through eternity, down there to 4,000 years and come right up in your mother's womb and then know who you are and then predict the day that you would receive him to the day that you would love him and the day that you would be received from him because he says, I know you. Somebody says he knows me in my mother's womb. Wrong. He knows you in every womb. And that's something great, God. He knows you. There's no one sitting here right now that God doesn't know. And has not ordained you in this place. He knew this woman would be the leader here. He even knew that I would be preaching this day. And you would be sitting there. I'm mission. He knows all things. And because he knows all things, he can afford to predict. He can afford to ordain. And then he gives us the faith to believe it. Because without faith, let me tell you something. You ain't going to believe some of the stuff God does. You go out your mind. And some of you have gone out your mind. God has surprised you with a move of faith that even blew your mind. Yeah. You know when you tried out that road and you didn't get it, praise God, and then you went home thinking that you weren't going to get it, only to get on the answer machine with the man down there that God was calling you and telling you, come pick up your car. Some of you have things right now that you swore you wouldn't get. Never mind your friends didn't think you were going to get it. There's some of 
you right now and said, Y'all, this is going to be my thing. So, why? There's some of you praise God that are breathing and walking right now, and they were fools. Well, you would have been living even last year. All the bullets that you can dodge and raise the things and unhealthy places that we've gone and laid down with the wrong thing, but get down. Church and praise God. And somebody says, You ain't got a baby to praise God. He did not sing me because I was good. He saved me because I was a mess up. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I come to church to praise the Lord. Praise God. Let me tell you something. I'm praising God because of the vision. I'm praising Him because of the things that I did. I find out that all of the crazy things that I did in my life, and we all did them. Yeah, y'all did some crazy things too. I know y'all want to sit there and act like Alex in Wonderland. But you messed up too. You tried too many liquor. You cussed too many times. And you went to bed with the wrong party, you know? Woke up in the wrong place and wondered who was this. Talk to me here. Only to find out, praise God, that justice. All the time you messed up because you was on the hit list of justice. Justice trying to put your lights out. But every time justice raises his hand, God raises his hand, and mercy stepped in and told justice, you can't have him. Somebody said, what a vision. What a vision. Man, you know I was going to mess up before I messed up and didn't turn around and clean up what I messed up. Look at somebody saying, I'm not going to praise God. You praise me. Look at somebody saying, I'm going to praise the Lord. One of the things here, the Bible says here, is that we have been trained, referring to the church, that in order to get a blessing from God, it's sown into us, and God is absolutely right. There were seasons of sorrow. Jesus went through one. The Bible says he was going through a season of sorrow, and the Bible says after he took them three Negroes down there to the Gethsemane place and left the others, come on, the Bible says he began to sing a song. The scripture says he was a deep sorrow. He was looking back and saying, my God, if all I done taught you guys, you got to be sitting there cracking up. Don't you know that I am the life of the resurrection? And they sit by one and what the Jesus going to make in the back. And the Bible said, praise God, especially when you heard the news that Judas committed suicide. Yeah. And the scripture says there was a season of sorrow. There was a season of pain. And thank God for pain. Because pain is the thermometer of our souls. Hallelujah. And he says, because of the vision, there's a season. And we've been taught there's a good season. There's a season to be blessed, and there's a season when you're not blessed. There's a season when we sow, and there's a season that we get. A season to live, and a season to die. But in the midst of all of these seasons, and we're going to talk about them before this week is out, amen, I'm just getting ready for it. God says here that because I have spoken a word, I want you to know that there are times that I can, I can alternate. I can change anything because I'm God. So the seasons come and go. Somebody said the seasons come and go. But there's a time, the Bible says that if you look into the Leviticus, the case is that a theological students in here wonder how, how uh, that's possible. When we read Leviticus 26 and you'll see it. Where the sowing time he talks about, from the threshing floor to the sowing time. In other words, we go to the threshing floor, and then we go to the vineyard, and then we go to the sowing of it. And then after a while, praise God, because that's done in the autumn, which is around June, and then we move over, praise God, around the river, and then we go around and around in the circle. But as I was sitting here tonight, God told me, He said, What the people of God, what y'all are embarking upon, you can let it go into a season of blessings without a word. And, 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 and Pastor Harley, ain't no other world. 
God can be talking this good and know that you come and that it ain't for you. Look at somebody's going to buy me in here, that's for me.